Let's say that you have a headache and you take your favorite pain reliever. Was it the lack of the pain reliever that caused the headache to start with? No, pain reliever only covers the symptoms. It's not the cause. Now, what does that have to do with some habits that maybe you started that weren't too bad in the beginning, but now they seem to be holding you back from your goals, like too much shopping, too much internet, too much food, uh, too much alcohol, too much anything. Well, those habits were probably started the same way that you took a pain reliever. You had something going on in your life and you didn't know how to take care of it. So those habits either offered you soothing or a distraction. But now, because the cause isn't getting addressed, they're actually getting out of control. In the same way with a headache, that if you don't find out why, why you're having it, and it continues to intensify, well, taking more of your favorite pain reliever isn't going to assist it. In fact, it's going to set up an additional set of problems. I know that from just a few summers ago. Actually, two, three summers ago, uh, I was in so much stress that uh, my, my I was clenching my jaw at night to the point to where I had cracked two teeth that were underneath a bridge, but I didn't know they were cracked. I just knew I was in a tremendous amount of pain and because of what was going on in my life at that time, I put handling it on the back burner and I took so much pain reliever that now if I just take um, one or two doses, it causes extreme reactions in my body. Well, it's the same way for those too much habits. See, this is what's going to happen. Um, you, you, you've got something that's causing you to be dysregulated. Oh, wait, yeah, I forgot to tell you. This is number three of four in the series of dysregulated, dysfunctional, toxic, and can it get any worse? Uh, and this is number three, where we're talking about when life goes dysfunctional, when we go dysfunctional, we were dysregulated. Something happened to our system to move us off of our success point. Uh, either we got too anxious or too avoidant. By the way, anxious, you look for habits that soothe. Avoidant, you'll look for habits that distract. Mm -hmm. So you had something pull you off of your success point that you are born with internally for your system. You went through an experience, you didn't know how to handle it. And then uh, because your system was in a chronic state of being overwhelmed, of overload, that allostatic load, fancy word for stress, was too high. So <clears throat> you looked for things that could temporarily have you feeling better. And then you decide at some point, I'm going to get healthy. I don't want these habits in my life anymore. So you decide to get rid of the twos too much, whatever it is. But because your system knows that this is the only way that it's going to be soothed or distracted, and now you take that away? Well, not only do you still have the cause that was um, having the, the allostatic overload beyond your capacity create havoc, now you got withdrawals from the soothing and the distraction. Think of it like this. You got a bank account and you get overdrawn. What's the bank going to do? It's going to charge you more money on top of what you didn't have to start with. That's what's happening in your system. You were overdrawn, so you just tried to quiet things down, and then you decide to give it up. Well, now you're going to be charged to overdraft fees uh, because you never address the cause to start with. Short-term soothing and distraction never was meant to be a long-term strategy for deprivation, for what you were missing, for whatever the cause was. 
And so your, your allocation account is still overdrawn. Well, what do we need to do? What do we need to do? Because, well, you need to stop dysregulating. You need to stop the dysfunctional habits. We need to get to the cause, but we also need to address the withdrawals in the present moment. How do you stop the self-sabotage and begin to create the life you desire? Well, on the self-sabotaging habits, I would look at doing replacements. So were you doing it to soothe yourself? Were you doing it as a distraction? And what can you put in its place that's going to be healthier for you? I'm going to tell you right now, soothing is the breathing. That's what I've been talking about for a while now. Got to do bottom up. We've got to address the body and how it feels. Distraction. Get yourself in an environment where you have to pay attention to what it is that you're doing. This is the reason why I love walking in the woods. I got a park near me, but not on the paved path. I love walking where there's tree stumps and um, uh, where you've got those, those gumballs, those sticker balls. You really have to pay attention to what it is that you are doing. You have to have a body awareness. That combined with the breathing, phenomenal. But let's say you don't have a park near you. Take a class, uh, maybe like a dance class, an aerobics class, where it has moves that you have to pay attention to. Get a video online where you, you have to pay attention to what you're doing. It's not the same repetition again and again. This is what it's going to do, the bottom up, and give yourself some space and place between you and the habit or pattern you're looking to replace. And I would do something like that, five, 10 minutes, and then you can engage in that unhealthy habit. But you're going to find that the more you do what, what's good for your system and get it back to that success point, the less you're going to have to engage in what's now beginning to cause hurt. Now, one of the reasons why I love hypnosis is because you can rapidly replace habits. You've all heard of people using hypnosis for stop smoking and weight reduction because you're able to go into the subconscious where the habit and pattern is held and be able to utilize the power of the mind to replace it. In fact, when I work with clients, I'll give some suggestions on what the replacement can be, but then I ask the subconscious to come up with some. I, Of course, I give guidelines that it has to be safe, it has to be healthy, it has to be progress-oriented, but you never know what the powerful mind is going to come up with that's better than what we could have thought of just using the prefrontal cortex, the conscious mind, which is the smallest part of our brain. Okay, so that's what you can do to stop the self-sabotage. Now, to create the life that you desire, you have a wound. I don't know what it is. Abandonment, rejection, unworthiness, invalidation, knowledge-seeking, power under, that wound also happens to be your wealth. The most phenomenal parts of you are held within that seed of pain. We just have to put it in the right environment and give it the right nurturing for it to bloom and blossom and begin to show benefits in your life. So uh, abandonment, turns into security. If it is to be, it is up to me. Rejection turns into freedom of choices. Unworthy turns into significance, pairing up with somebody else to make the world a better place. And validation turns into love, a fuller expression of who you are. Knowledge turns into wisdom because you're actually putting it into action. And power under winds up being power over because learned helplessness can be relearned. If you want to investigate that further, reach out to me, 1-636-699-7791. Leave me a voicemail or send me a text message, 
and I will respond with a link where you can set up a complimentary coaching call. Break free from what's holding you back. And I promise that you will leave with a tip tool or technique that you can use same day for rapid results. Because I believe I have to earn the right to be in your life. And one of the ways I earned it is because I've been through all this. And I can tell you, there is a brilliant future on the other side where you can be absolutely fulfilled. But it's not going to happen as long as you continue to just address the symptoms through soothing or distraction. And you never get to the cause. That cause is your destiny calling. So until we get together again, because there's one more in this series, Toxic. Can it get any worse? Yes, it can. What we're going to look at when our systems go toxic, but we're also going to look at when others in our environment want to keep us toxic for their benefit at our expense. Okay, so until we get together again, blessings on your journey.